Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to be finishing out the electric fan circuit on the 1940s Chevy by adding a thermostatic switch. If you've watched my previous video, you saw the wiring harness for the 1940s Chevy get made. Now, the car already had electric fans on it. The circuit for the electric fans was terrible. And what we discovered was that there had been a semi-correct circuit of wiring in the car, and then someone else had come along later and butchered it and put it in totally incorrectly. And essentially, we replaced all the bad wiring and added in a relay, but we reused the switch under the dash. Now what we're going to be doing is making it so the system can turn itself on. In the previous video, you also saw why the logic is so important for building your relay trigger circuit to be grounding based. In this case, the toggle switch that existed under the dash already is used to ground the relay's triggering side to close the circuit. Now, by doing this, you're future-proofing the system. And in this case, all I have to do to complete this system is send a grounding signal from a thermo switch, and I can make the system engage on its own by tapping into the same wire the switch closes. Now, if you were to use a fuel injection system like a Sniper EFI on this system, the computer would also be sending out a grounding signal, so it gives you future proofing should you step up to a fuel injection system, or if you want to keep using basic thermo switches. Now, in the land of thermo switches, there's a lot of different kinds. There's some you can put in your water neck on your intake manifold. You can put them in the radiator themselves. In this case, there's already one in the radiator from the previous system that I'm going to attempt to reuse. Here at the front of the radiator, you can see a small brass protrusion. That's the front of the probe sticking through the fins of the radiator for this particular type of temperature switch. Now this type of temperature switch is not my ideal as it relies on the heat being transferred from the radiator through to the switch to trigger rather than directly sampling the temperature of the coolant like something on a water neck or on the intake manifold would do. Now, I'm going to reuse this if possible because it's already here and jammed through my radiator, but also because I'm not that concerned about exactly what my temperature threshold is for this trigger. I just want something to trigger, and as long as it's below 210 degrees, I'm pretty fine with it on the Chevy 350. It's not that temperamental of an engine, and it's not a race car. If I wanted more performance out of this, I would want my fans coming on much lower to keep the temperature cooler, and if I wanted some efficiency, I might actually want it to get a little warmer than this. But now that we know where this is and how it works, let's look at the blades on the back. The blades on the back are two prongs that simply carry some sort of current through. Now, on one side for mine, all I need to do is attach a permanent ground, something grounded preferably back safely inside the cab to something that's a really good ground. Likely, it will be the same ground I'm carrying from the battery for the rest of the circuit. On the other portion, I will have the triggered ground that will be going to the other half of my relay. It will be connecting into the same wire that the toggle switch uses and will ground it out just like if I flipped the switch. Now, because I'm using grounds here, if any of these should wear through, they will actually turn the fans on because they will ground out, but I won't have any risk of fire. And because I used ignition on to trigger the other half of the relay circuit, it will turn off when I turn the key off, so there's no risk of running your battery dead or being stuck in a situation where the fans run endlessly. This is another safety feature of using grounded switched circuits. So let's go ahead, start testing some of this out and see if we can get a little wiring harness made.
The door is open because I've been running this car testing it out, and as it turns out, the temperature switch that was already in the car was plenty good. I have no idea why they butchered their electric fan system before, but everything works just fine. It appears that that temperature switch comes on somewhere around 200 degrees and seems to stay on until about 180. So that's a perfect range. You don't want your switches turning your fans on and off within a very narrow range because it's hard on the fans and it's really annoying to listen to them spool up and turn off all the time. Now, this wiring wasn't nearly as pretty as I'd like to make it, but again, it's quasi-temporary. A lot of it will stay and be used. A lot of the harnesses that exist will stay with the car, but some of the stuff under the dash will get trimmed and rerouted and changed up once I have time to fix all the other spaghetti wiring under the dash. Ultimately, I've got it set up the way I want it, which is safe enough that I can let someone else drive the car without having to worry about them melting it down. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.